You all know her. Everybody knows her, of course. She uh, has been one of our leaders at Wesley for years. She is a real organizer, man. She's got the touch, you know. I, I was listening to a show today on the radio, and they said they talk about different kinds of kids, and one of them is the driver. They have, they make a list for everybody in the family what they need to do this today. And it's, they really got it organized. They got the gift of organizing people, which is a handy thing to have. And she's been part of our Wesley Student Leadership Council, and she is. Let's see, her mom is a physics and astronomy teacher in high school. Uh, her brother is a particle physicist. Particle physicist. Uh, in Texas, she is going to be a Spanish. Bachelor of Arts in Spanish. Yeah, Bachelor of Arts in Spanish. Yes, and we'll see from there. I know she'll organize the world, but let's welcome to share with us today. We'll have you out of here by about twelve till, so you can get to class. Beata Hall, Beata, thank you. So much. Well, I was going to sit on the chair, but... Thanks. Can everybody hear me? People the back row, can you hear me? Well, you're not the back row, the back back row. Can you guys hear me? Excellent. Hi, everybody. My name's Beata. Um, I'm a senior here at the University of Tulsa. And, um, well, I guess a good place to start is actually my name. I always kind of wondered about my name because it's a little different. And my big brother, his name's Ryan. Most people know Ryan, you know, perfectly normal name. So I asked my mom, like, why, why Beata? And the explanation that she came up with was back in the early 90s when she was pregnant with me, she was substitute teaching. And out of the class of about 30 students and about 15 girls, you'd have about five Ashleys, five Tiffany's, and five Jennifer's. So she decided to name me something different. Uh, in German, Beata means bringer of luck and spreader of joy. And according to Urban Dictionary, uh, <laughs> it's actually a good one. Uh, she loves to have fun and likes to get things done. It's funny how sometimes Urban Dictionary gets things right. I don't recommend it for looking up anything else other than my name. <laughs> Uh, Mathematica doesn't seem to know that my name exists. It says that Beata is a minor planetoid. So apparently I'm fairly celestial. But all that to say, my name sort of set me apart from the very beginning. I was an oddball from the get-go. I never stopped talking, ever. Uh, the first day of pre-K, my mom taught at the preschool that I attended. I, so she dropped me off early with my teacher, Mrs. Martin. And Mrs. Martin was moving around the classroom, getting things organized, getting things set up, and I'm just following her around and talking the entire time. So at some point, she turns around to me and she goes, you're quite the chatterbox, aren't you? Yes, ma'am, and I just kept right on going. As a kid, I was a little different. I like to read books, I really do. Um, I wasn't into sports. I was bad at sports. I was very bad at sports. Uh, I tried a lot of different sports. Wasn't very good at any of them. Which was okay, because there weren't exactly superstars on the basketball team, or in the tennis group, or at the soccer team, or at t-ball, or swimming, or anything else that I tried. But I was a bit different, and kids are exceptionally good at pointing that out about people. They can look at you and be like, you're weird, and meaner things than that. Um, I was bullied a bit as a kid, and by a bit, I mean a lot. Um, I went to a fairly, I call it a nerdy elementary school. We were Hillside Academy for Excellence. Uh, but as the sole female in my age level in the math and science team, I got a lot of jokes made and some mean things were said. And through, throughout all of this, I, I, throughout everything that happened, middle school was no fun either. Uh, I, I sort of matured faster than a lot of my classmates. I attended the first funeral 
uh, in my lifetime, in about third grade. Um, so my, my concept of life and death was rather different from my classmates. And I was ostracized sometimes because I'd look at things and be like, I don't care who the Backstreet Boys are. I don't care that the lead singer of NSYNC is dating this person. Those things didn't fall into the things that are important to me. Uh, today, I know a lot about nerd pop culture. I can tell you anything you well, not anything you want to know about Benedict Cumberbatch, but uh, I know my Sherlock and I know my Doctor Who, and uh, I appreciate uh, the the Hobbit, the Lord of the Rings. I've, I've read the books and seen the movies. Um, I like video games, but just because I like those things doesn't mean that I actually rank them as important. Um, but I, as a kid, I kind of came to the conclusion that no one should ever feel like I did when people would say mean things to me, or not play with me at recess, or in general do some of the stuff that they did. Um, I told Ron I wasn't going to need a box of Kleenex, I was apparently very wrong. Um, as a fifth grader, uh, one day at recess, my friends were just like, we're going to play this, and you're not invited, basically. And so I wrote them a little note, and it basically said, well, if you guys aren't going to play with me, what's the point of living? I was 10. Hey, Ron, can I get Kleenex? Sorry, I don't share that one very often. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and uh, that was what set up middle school for me. And then high school. Oh, thank you. Um, but throughout all of that, I never doubted that God loved me. Which is sort of strange to say, because you think that if you didn't interact well with your peers, and you only felt like the people who loved you were your family, you kind of have a different viewpoint of life. <laughs> I really talk on Oprah about people that look, that don't look really pretty when they cry. That's me. Um, I, I felt ostracized by my peers and unloved. But God, I don't know that I ever doubted that God loved me. Which is sort of funny to say, because when it feels like the whole world's against you, you wouldn't think that the person that you give credit for creating that world would be the person you'd still trust and have faith in. But it's true. God was always there for me. He was always someone to talk to, always someone who I felt love from. Even when I fought with my parents about things, or got into arguments with friends, God was there. And I think that's really affected how I treat other people. Uh, for me, God is love, and that means that I should show love to everyone. And that gets tricky sometimes, and it can be emotionally draining, and it can be hard when you're the only person who looks at the, the super awkward person in the room and goes, Hi, I'm Beato, what's your name? Well, or insert your name here, rather. Um, it can make you a weirdo further. Uh, I, I do get made fun of a lot for knowing everybody. And as much as I protest that I don't know everyone, I really don't. There are a lot of people in here I don't know. Weston's numbers are way off. Um, <laughs> It doesn't mean that I don't think they're valuable as a person or someone that I'd like to get to know and know their name, because no one should ever feel like I did. Everyone should feel welcome, everyone should feel important, and everyone should feel the love that God has shown me. Um, so that's one, one of the points I'd like to make today, that God is love. Uh, the next is, God can be found anywhere. I, I, I spoke a moment ago about liking pop culture things. Douglas Adams wrote The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is one of my favorite books. It's highly ridiculous, makes no sense, and Arthur Dent is one of the strangest characters you'll ever find. So is Ford Prefect. 
He's named for a car. I mean, that's a good starting point for making him a strange character. Douglas Adams is an atheist, and yet when I read The Hitchhiker's Guide or when I watch the movie, I can look at that and go, there's a lesson to be learned here. God is in everything, and you can find inspiration uh, to, to do good in the world and to, to treat others well uh, from everything. John Wesley said, do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. And I think he had the right idea. Um, doing good means doing the right thing. And that can be tough sometimes. And I really don't like public speaking. And yet for the past several years, I've done announcements here and I've acted in the videos and I've ended up being the, the group representative for something several times. And that's more of the needing, needing someone to do that. And so I've said, okay, I can do that. I don't like it, but I can. Um, in, in, there's, there's a verse in Philippians, uh, I believe it's 4.13, that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I've never felt that anything, anything was impossible. Some things are harder than others. But nothing, nothing is impossible. And sometimes I look at my life and I go, well, how did that all work out? How did I get from point A to point B? How did I go from Garland to Tulsa, Oklahoma at a school that I could never afford um, without scholarships? And how did I end up in Ogallala, Nebraska studying birds for a summer in a very life-changing experience? And uh, the, a quote from Shakespeare in Love comes to mind. Have any of you guys seen it? Shakespeare in Love? It's, a, it's an Oscar award winning film. Um, and in it, the, one of the theater owners is being beat up by some loan sharks because he, he hasn't paid them their money. And they're like, the theaters are all closed because of the plague. And he's like, it'll all work out. And they're like, how? And he says, I don't know. It's a mystery, but it will. And then this guy comes along behind him in the street, ringing the bell and going, the theaters are open, the theaters are open, for no good reason. I mean, you know, it just, it, sometimes life doesn't go according to plan, but God's got a plan, and sometimes you just got to trust that if something's given to you and it seems super easy, that's just the right way to go. Uh, sometimes. The path of temptation is also really easy sometimes. <laughs> Facebook. Facebook over homework? Yeah, Facebook's so much easier than homework. Uh, but, but other things, like, well, this is the right place for me to be, or this is the right thing for me to do. Uh, like, how I ended up here at the Wesley, or how I ended up doing any of the things that I do, it's all sort of happenstance and chance. Or so it would seem if I didn't know that God was there with a plan and with ideas and with a path for my life. I really don't know what I'm going to do after graduation. When people ask me, I tell them I'm moving back in with my mom and dad. Um, rent's cheap. Food's good. I mean, my mom makes pan-fried pork chops in her own lasagna. What's not to like? Um, and, and I'm probably actually going to end up working at Walmart again. I enjoyed working at Walmart last summer. It was good money. Uh, good times. I got to interact with a ton of people, new people every day, uh, and that was great for me. I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. I'd like to change the world. I think world peace is possible. Uh, there, in, according to what I know about major world religion, there's no major world religion that teaches a doctrine other than peace. And because of that, I think that world peace is possible, and that. If God is love, we can all get along, and that the world can change. Uh, I don't know who said it, but be the change you want to see in the world. I'm working on it. One step at a time, one person at a time. Uh, I'm also really watching the clock now. I had some more funny stories to share, too, but they've all sort of flown away. So I'll just tell you guys a joke instead. Uh, do you guys want to hear a joke? Yes. yes. 
So I worked in a library for a very long time. I was the bouncer for story time. <laughs> which, is, which is a whole other story. I can tell that one in a minute. <laughs> but uh, this, this librarian told me a story about how when they first built one of the libraries towards the north of town, there was just like this empty field and a wooded area across the street. Well, and please note, this is a joke. One day, this, this chicken walks into the library and walks up to the library and goes, Ooh! So the librarian's like, okay, well, you know, she checks him out a book and tucks it under a wing and walks back out of the library and across the field. The next day, the chicken comes back and goes, boop, boop. So the librarian gives him two books, one for each wing, and the chicken tucks him under the wing and walks out the door and goes on his merry right way. Well, for the third day, the librarian's fairly curious. You know, they'd like to get their books back. And it's okay to check out new books every day from the library, but it'd probably be a good idea to see where these books are going. So the chicken comes in and goes, boop, boop, boop. So one book under each wing, and one tucked between his little chicken legs, and he walks out, and the librarian follows. So this chicken goes across this, this field and through these woods into the stream, and drops the books, and picks up the first one, and just chucks it across the stream. And out in the middle of the street, they're sitting this little bullfrog who goes, read it, read it. <laughs> thank, you, thank you for the sympathy laugh. Um, I, I, I did volunteer at the library for a very long time. Uh, our, when I worked at the, the Central Library as a volunteer, for story time, we had a very strict fire code. And our library offers some of the most fantastic summer programs. Um, as a kid, we got to see magicians and clowns and, and well, I was going to say acrobats, but we never had acrobats. Uh, we had flamingo dancers. We had a lot of live animals. People like, the kids like the live animals. Like, we have uh, baby kangaroos and 12-foot boa constrictors and, and just all these cool animals from all over the world. And... I'm an adult, and I still think that's pretty cool. So we'd have all these parents come in with like their 12-year-olds, and we had a very strict fire code, so we had parents come in with these 12-year-olds, and the librarian, who was five foot nothing, would get up and say, hey, if your kids can sit by themselves, we'd ask that you would leave so we could make more space for more kids. And it would be my job to stand at the door and glare down all of the parents sitting on the wall to make sure that they get out so that we can make more space for more kids. Uh, luckily for you guys, God's love's not like that. There's no fire code. Uh, there's space for everybody in God's family. Uh, there's not always space for everybody in a car. There's not always space for everybody in a room. Sometimes we definitely hit capacity in this basement. Uh, but God's love, love is not like that. God's love is for everyone. And if you've got questions about that, or you want to hear me tell more bad jokes or funny stories, uh, I'll be around after lunch uh, to, to be here. And if you can stay and help clean up, I'd really appreciate it, because I'm going to have to multitask, and that'd be great.